But how, how does one underscore an entire episode of children's TV? This is Underscoring for Television, part two. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm a composer and sound designer for the serial television show called The Highway, and I'd like to share some of my process with you. Let's begin. I've spent the past six months working on this TV show, learning, growing, adapting, changing, upgrading my process, and this is kinda how things shook out. Like I mentioned before, the episode comes to my desk once it's cut and locked, so nothing's gonna change except for the sound, and that's my job. I get to go in there and mess things and write things and boom, 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 and then I upload it when it's done. We all watch it together, we give notes, we change some things, we make edits and tweaks, and then we send it off to the station to be on TV. For your viewing pleasure, I've organized my process into three bite-sized chunks. The first step, I call organization. The first thing I do is I watch the whole thing from beginning to end. As I'm watching, I'm writing down each scene as it happens and taking notes. A and B stands for ambience. I know I'm gonna spice up that scene with some birdies and trees. Maybe music? Question mark? I gotta make a transition out of this scene into the song that follows it. This is the big, meaty, juicy scene. Almost no dialogue in this scene, so it's gonna rely heavily on music. This one's probably gonna take the most amount of time. Essentially, this part is about making a solid plan. I'd like to show you what my workspace looks like right at the beginning. This is what I get from the lead editor. Uh, so here's all the layers of sound. This is what it sounds like. Hi everyone! Is it Reese? Craziness. There's, there's no sound. It's all over the place. This is part of phase two. The second step I call assimilation. So, as per my plan, I'll drop in song files, transition sounds, sound effects, ambient sounds for certain scenes that need that. And I'll also level out the audio of the vocals throughout the entire episode, so all the speech is at the same consistent level. So, I know the theme song is right here. Snap that right where it belongs. I know a title card goes here. Plop that bad boy right in. And there we go. With some of the low-hanging fruit out of the way, it's time for some sound design. So at this point while working on this episode, we already had the actors come in and overdub all of the puppet lines. I'll show you those right here. So this is the full project and just what you see in the purple here, that's all of the voices in the whole episode, 30 minutes wide. Let's take a listen and see how it sounds now. What's going on over there? Everyone, is it really cool? Now, if you're listening with headphones, you might feel that the sound is a little dry. There's vocals, they sound clean and crisp for the most part, but it's kind of bland. Visually, we can see there's a lot going on. They're outside, there's cars passing, the trees are blowing in the wind, but we don't hear any of that. None of those sounds were picked up by the microphones during filming, so I usually like adding back in some of that ambience. I added some minor birds, two sets of trees, and some cars passing by. Now that, with the leveled vocals and a little bit of music, here's the final product. What's going on over there? I love it, Uncle Moses! Hi everyone! Is it recess? So different, right? The ambient sound gives it depth and realism and it feels like you're actually in a place. It's not distracting and it doesn't overpower the vocals. It complements what's going on in the scene. This kind of layering often goes unnoticed, but it's one of my favorite things to do. It's all part of the storytelling. And the third stage I shall call... Creation. So by now, I'm usually pretty familiar with the whole episode and I can start getting into it. This is the fun stuff. I mean, the other stuff is fun too, but this is fun also. Into this stage goes underscoring scenes, underscoring the interview sections, whether that's with temp tracks, editing those and fitting them in like we did in our last video, or adding transitions, kind of smoothing out the whole thing. I know I mentioned transitions in stage two, but if there are transitions that I didn't have any stuff that I've already made that fits, then I'll just have to make something new. In this scene that we saw earlier, just like we did last time, I laid out my outline for this specific scene, beginning, middle, and end, and then decided where I could use music to lift the energy even higher. In this scene, Uncle Moses, 
explains what racism is to our group of kids from Aloha Elementary School. Uncle Moses speaks and the kids ask questions. I felt that it didn't need any music. Then at the emotional climax, swelling strings on an unsettling chord that kind of emphasize how they were feeling. But we still have to do something about it. Hold on, you guys. One more time, let's breathe together. Hanu. Ha. My Kagi. And then it continues through the rest of the scene without music. In the next video, I'll go further into depth on how I underscore for these narrative scenes, super fun. Here's a scene where I use mostly pre-made tracks taken from a show I sound designed years ago. Here you can see the first track, right there is the intro turned up a bit because there's no talking yet. This is the majority of the person talking, this is the end of that track, and then a shift in the scene, it's an interview scene to another piece of music. Scroll down here, and here is the music that I composed to come out of the pre-made music and end the scene in a nice way. Just like we did in the last video, we're slowly shifting from the temp track into new music. Cause he doesn't know my name correctly. It might be easier for you to shorten someone's name or to call them something else, but... It's so it's just a, a continuation it. of it, the previous melody from the track cool but this way I can control exactly how it ends so I can make it end right with her words. Gifted a name by their family. I'm able to use the end of that music to transition us into the next scene. When I started working on the show, I was compelled for some reason to make every single piece of music from scratch every time. You don't have to do that. Sometimes it's nice to reuse assets that you've already made. It saves time and it kind of keeps the show consistent across multiple episodes. And that's everything. After I'm done with those three phases, I'll upload, we'll all watch, review, notes, edit, and then the fourth last semi-stage is me tweaking and fixing and just getting it a little bit closer to perfect. It's never gonna be perfect, it has to be on TV, but almost perfect and done is better than perfect and never done. Is that everything? Does this even make any sense? Do you have any questions? I don't know, we're all gonna die someday. Hey, and that's everything! I hope you had fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. See you next time.